promise, he 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 promise, he
to the Progressive Empowerment Party and we'll cut the cake and then we'll share it with everybody who's present. So if you're present Saturday at noon, you'll get Pepper, Progressive Empowerment Party, birthday cake. Right? So we will make that happen. Lord have mercy. I hope they remind me. Um, I will just put that in a message thread here. So we will remember. And we tag Felicia and Shari and Sharina and maybe even Debbie Lee. Between them, they will make sure that that happens. Because a bakery treats cake. Oh gosh, Kendall, you're well talk. Michelle Sohan. I could, I could organize that from Michelle Sohan. I type in that too. Right. We're doing this as we go. Right. So, next week, well, this Saturday coming, Saturday will be the 27th. We will have a birthday song, birthday. we'll sing happy birthday and we'll cut the cake because it's very important. At first year anniversary, a lot of political parties don't get out the gate, you know. A lot of political parties can't do what we did yesterday. And I say this because many members of the PEP do not want me answering trolls. They do not want me engaging in responding to detractors and haters as of now. So that means you're going to see that I am going to avoid the trolls, the haters, the detractors, the political animals. You're going to see me ignore them or do my best to ignore them. I don't want you to mistake that for weakness in any way. The PEP marketing team are of the view that I can no longer engage those people at that level. Which is a shame because it's good sport sometimes to catch, to catch them in their own nonsense. I have a post up that I'm going to take down. Even though buzz alert Without, they have so many groups that without Philip Alexander or PEP, I don't know what they would do, what they would post, what they would share. I don't know because, anyway, and it's a funny post too because, anyway. I have just deleted it. Those who shared it, I'm sorry. It will show us attachment unavailable to your shares, but I apologize. But I am nothing if can't take guidance. So when the members say that they prefer we do things a certain way. Right. Shiva Verma of the PEP is also the outgoing chairman of Veg Vision. Young doctors, medical professionals up at Mount Hope, they, uh, they have a thing called Veg Vision. They promote vegetarian and vegan lifestyle. And they're having an event in the next couple of days. And they need to get a couple of chairs and tables sponsored. Not much, just for that event at Mount Hope. And anybody who is willing to help, please, on my friends list, reach out to Shiva, S-H-I-V-A, Varma, V-E-R-M-A. Or you can message me and I'll put you on to her. Or you can message Sarah Nabi. Yeah? Um, I also have something else to read. Before I get into calling Debbie Lee Jaikaran, Debbie Lee was the person that was given responsibility for pulling off the event yesterday, and she did an amazing job. I'm so impressed by the professionalism of the entire thing. I mean, at every stage. So I'm going to let her... Do, she was supposed to do a vote of thanks. We ran an hour late last night. The thing went an hour longer almost. And um, we lost the ability to do that because as soon as my little section finished, it, people, I mean, they were there for a while, so they just wanted to go. Um, 
we're gonna do that now. I remember when Father Harold Imamsha from Crystal Stream Church blessed a political office that we were operating in. He gave us the admonition to be leaders who serve and servants who lead. And that is such a true, true thing. And we don't, we don't lose sight of that. Eh? And, and I had written something that I was going to share. Because so many things happened yesterday. I know I'm sounding tired. Eh? Let me tell you something. This has been an exhausting week, so I'm still recovering. Christ washed the feet of his disciples as an example to all of us. I watched a woman do what many would consider the lowest job of all. She and her team kept the park where the rally was held spotless, took care of the bathrooms and the toilets, worked harder than people I have seen work for big money. I kept watching her and them, filtering through the crowd, taking care of all of us, and all I thought was, here was one of Pep's princesses, one of our inner circle, and so humble and caring. And because the thing ran over time, she and a couple others, they, they're speaking, they lost the opportunity to speak. And yesterday's event, we had a very professional camera crew to film the event, and I was told that they were going to use it to give me good mileage and good exposure. That I was going to get good exposure from it, and I thought, this is not an I thing. This is not a me thing. This is a pet thing. And if she couldn't speak, how could I? And I, I, I want to say this, eh? other political leaders pull up to rallies during speeches and interrupt proceedings as if they are royalty. We in the PEP have no time for that foolishness. We were given a mandate to be servants who lead and leaders who serve. If we don't get that right, nothing else will matter. Keitha Chandler, the first time I heard you speak, girl, you reinforced in my mind why I am willing to be a part of this. You reinforced in my mind why my political choice is not to be a political bandit. You reinforced in my mind why I know that I have to fight the power structure that has made life so hard for so many. You reinforce and you continue to reinforce in my mind, Keitha Chandler. You lead me. You lead me. You and others lead me. I do this work. I do a lot of this work because of people like you. The PEP is a party of royalty all above me. I have a job to do and I will do it. But I put myself above no one and I do not want anyone to put me there. Last night, at the end of the rally, all of the hugs and the kisses and the handshakes and the well wishes, I want to tell you, I accept all of it on behalf of all of the hardworking members of the Progressive Empowerment Party. This will never be a me thing. This will never, ever be an ego thing. This will never, ever be that. And if I ever think, I want to share a personal thing with you. A couple years ago, I had... I was in the nightclub business. I had owned a nightclub. And this is about two decades ago. Me and a couple of partners. We had owned a nightclub. And one night, I mean, we were living the life, eh? We were living the life and we were having a good time making money, plenty girls, and you're having young boy life and you're having that life. And one night I had a dream. And I dreamt, I dreamt myself in the exact spot that I was sleeping in, wearing the exact clothes that I was wearing, which was strange and weird. Really strange, really weird, because I've never had that happen to me before. I've never dreamt myself exactly how I was in real, so that when I woke up, I couldn't tell which was the dream and which was the reality, and that happened. I've had two dreams in life that changed my path. This was the first one. This dream changed my life path. And in the dream, it's a very simple dream, huh? It's a very simple dream, but it was a disgusting dream. In the dream, I am wearing the exact clothes that I'm wearing, and I'm sleeping exactly where I'm sleeping. But in the dream, I, am, I have two holes under my armpits, and I'm feeling those two holes under my armpits, and maggots are 
pushing out of them and I'm, and I have two piles of maggots near me that came out of me and I woke up stressed and there were no maggots but I was so confused and disoriented because I was exactly where I was in the dream and I was wearing the exact clothes the only thing that was missing were the holes and the maggots but I got the message I was rotting inside I was rotting inside and that told me that that life that I was living that was the life that I was made to live that was not my life and I I have friends in all religions I have had people pray on me read me read my life and I really keep telling me that I I have a purpose but every time that I ignore that and I go about just fixing myself as get this as get thrown off course as get thrown off course it's like it's not open for discussion I have no say I have to serve. It's a job. We've done that. I have to explain to somebody. She heard some of the things that we do as a charitable organization that I'm also a part of. She heard some of the things that we've done for people. And she said, people need to hear that. And I, I told her, people will never hear that. None of that was politics. And that will not be used to get me office. I swear, if, if, if I get public office, I go into work in a short sleeve shirt. If I get public office, I go into shirt, go into work in a short sleeve shirt. You see all this tie and suit and all this foolishness. I, I swear to you, I don't want none of that. I don't want none of all of that that you see. These little egos, no big egos, these little men and women with big egos that we live on a dot. People in the rest of the world look at us as a banana republic for the way our leaders behave. You know? Most importantly, the reason they treat us like a banana republic is the way they behave. We had a prime minister who spent millions of dollars helicoptering it's take more fuel to put the helicopter in the air and back down than it is to actually fly from town to Separia. But they used to like that they could do those things because, I mean, we're living in stunt artist paradise, this little rock. I'm not here to bad talk nobody, as I said. I mean, I'm losing all my privileges. I can't call nobody name. I can't cuss. I can't respond. We want you to be more leader like. Alright. But we are a tropical island and we wear suits. I do it too because it's part of the course, but it is so foolish. Because we are a tropical island and we shouldn't. The people in, in temperate countries have to wear layers of clothes and that's how we end up with suits. And we shouldn't have to wear that and I mean. I think that they do these things to disconnect and set a, a, a disconnect between them and the public, like a barrier. We want, we, we want a parliament where the viewing audience is like a stadium. We want a parliament where it could never fall. Come and see what's going on in your parliament. Come and watch how laws are made. Come and be a part of that process. We want it transparent. We don't want to... And we, and we, and we want to remove the parliamentary privilege that allows members to defame and scandalize people. Because you have to continue the live broadcast. You have to broaden it. You have to make sure that people can receive it anywhere. But you can't use a parliamentary broadcast and defame people because they've done it to me. They've done it to me on numerous occasions. I had to take that because that's just how it is. But we will undo that because you don't need that. If you need permission from the speaker and protection, you, you should have to go to the speaker and present 
what you want to say. And the speaker has the authority to approve or deny. Because if the speaker approves defamation and you defame somebody and they take you to court, the speaker should have to pay too. Because the speaker of the house has a responsibility not to stunt, to protect inside and outside the house. They have stuff that I read when I go to the parliament about places in the parliament where if you're not a member of a parliament, you're a stranger to this house. And I ask myself, what madness am I reading? Without the people of Trinidad and Tobago, that house doesn't exist. Its purpose is to serve the people. The servants have forgotten what their roles are. The servants have put themselves above the masters. The people of Trinidad and Tobago are the masters of parliament. The people of Trinidad and Tobago are the masters of government. And we must make sure that that is put back in place. We must make sure. Last night, Ian Griffith made a speech. He started off by how we met. We met as two strangers outside a protest. He was protesting for a school and I came and I joined the protest. And that's how Ian Griffith and I became friends. Harry Hunt and I became friends when Harry reached out to me about a friend of his, a woman who died in the hospital. And we met and we spoke about it. And I said I will do anything that I could to help. We, and that's how there's a progressive empowerment party today. I mean, a lot of people came on board after that. A lot of work was done. All I'm saying is, those people in that conversation Ian said in his speech to Keith Rowley in your Obama-esque presentation and you're trying to pass yourself off as Obama he had to remind Keith Rowley that Obama never told anybody else in the Congress that his shoes are shit kickers and that you want to kick him up. Obama never hit on a married journalist during a press conference. Obama never referred to Hillary as a Janet. Obama never spoke of women in America and referred to them disparagingly and said like golf courses, they need to be groomed or they turn to ruin and pasture. Obama never had to tell Hillary, you can bark at my dog, I will ignore your cat. Obama never did none of those things. You can't copy an Obama speech and walk up to a lectern, Obama-esque, and become Obama, Keith. Keith Rowley, you will never be Obama. You could have, anyway. I feel muzzled. I am learning as I go. The people want me to be less argumentative. I am calling Debbie Lee Jaikaran. Debbie Lee is responsible for the vote of thanks. And I hope Debbie Lee remembers that I am calling her. Debbie Lee? Debbie Lee? Hi. You are live. Mm -hmm. And this is this call is to ask you to say the thanks to all the people, the vote of thanks that we were supposed to say last night. You up to that? Yep. The floor is actually, yours. I was actually disappointed that I didn't get to do my vote of thanks yesterday. Could you, could you speak more? I believe that's one of the most integral parts of an event. It is. Could you speak more into the phone? You're coming across, yes, sure. you're coming across soft. Mm hmm All right. Are you hearing me better now? I think so. Okay. Um, so, if I'm sounding scripted, it's because I'm actually reading my vote of that. Go ahead. <laughs> I'd like to um, start with a quote by a German philosopher and Nobel Peace Prize winner, Dr. Albert Schweitzer, who said, and quote, 
At times, our own light goes out and is rekindled by a spark from another person. Each of us has cause to think with deep gratitude of those who have lighted the flame within us. End quote. Wow. I'd like to acknowledge that the flame had indeed been lit in every person there yesterday, fanned into life by a few who have dared to attempt to change the status quo of a country 55 years in the breaking. <coughs> it is my honor to express heartfelt thanks to everyone who have contributed in some way to one making yesterday an astounding and resounding success. To the members of the interreligious organization, we acknowledge your presence and thank you for making the time to be there to bless our proceedings. To our guest speakers, Mr. Ian Griffith, Ms. Anne-Marie Dulal, Ms. Sarah Nabi, Ms. Marina Bott, Dr. Shiva Varma, Mr. Ryan Shinsang, Ms. Shizelle Ramjit, Mr. Robert Amar, Mr. Kerry Grant, and Mr. Richard Blaze. Your delivery of PP's policies had not only served to inform, but also ignited a hope that was thought lost. Special mention must also be made of our advisory council led by Mr. Kenneth Luke, including Dilwood, Raffitt, Ali G, Carla Jean Medford, Anne-Marie Dulal, Helen Montandon, and Brendan Butt for the creation of these policies. You have left no stone on earth in your search for workable best dual practices as solutions for our, our country. Your diligence is deeply appreciated. To all the entertainers, Mr. Raul Motilal for your lovely renditions on pan, Mr. Mark Ruiz, all the way from Tobago, for injecting some humor into the evening's proceedings, the members of the Shiv Shakti Dance Group and Harlem Tata Group for your cultural items, Mr. Simeon Sword and Mr. Nimal Gosain, Massive Gosain, sorry, for your riveting performances. We say thank you for making our program exceptional. To the Lunch Park Residents Association, who have been so gracious and accommodating, we say an especially warm thank you to you all. To the officers of the Shigwanas Police Station and Mr. Michael Hosam of Ultimate Security for providing us with a competent, efficient security detail for the event, we thank you for your service. To Mr. Robin Mohammed and Mr. Shamir Bagan for providing us with professional sign language interpretation services, making the event an all-inclusive one, catering to every member of society. We applaud you and assure you that the Progressive Empowerment Party will always make special needs a top priority. To Mr. Avinash Mongol of Platinum Deco and Design for donating your time and expertise. You literally set the stage for success, and we can't thank you enough for perfection. To Mr. Roland Williams and team of Hot Rod Sounds for providing us with our very effective sound system. Thank you for ensuring that our messages were clearly received by all. To all our suppliers, Johnny Q, Renee Vision and Sound, Motor City Limited, Alan Stent Rentals, Mr. Gosain, Roger Watson, ABC White Format Limited, Events Land, Nigel LaSalle, and others. We thank you for your patience and service. I can go no further without thanking each and every member of the, the Progressive Empowerment Party who contributed, whether in cash or kind, both locally and internationally, to what or at El Picos, Rolling Tire Importers, or a Surge Caribbean Limited, Joel de Souza, Michelle Sohan, Rajendra Tiwari, Ram Hanuman, Sunil Gilhari, Ashwin Udu Singh, Ryan Shinsang, Derek Nunes, Cliff Curry, Janice de Souza, and from our overseas chapters who donated and were coordinated by Kishore Ganis, Jean Paul Nathaniel, and Abigail Sinanan and others who did not want their names mentioned for personal reasons, the idea of that rally could have only been brought to fruition 
because of your unconditional support and generosity. We will never be able to fully express how truly grateful we are to you all. To the members of our team, as the event coordinator, I could not have asked for a more dedicated, patriotic, amazingly incredible group of people to work with. To the most committed and selfless chairman, Felicia Holder, and Deputy Chair Sean Funerine in his absence, our PR Road Dream Team, Janice Lemon Creaky and Anthony Defoe, Harry Hunt, Sarah Nabi, Rohan Suraj, Anil Passad, Lorena Lucien, Colleen Sedano, Bruce Soon, Joshua Alexander, Giselle Jordan Young, Usha Davidine, Jenny and Kevin Gaiadin, Michael C. Paul, our brilliant graphic designers, Kendall and Susan, Lima McLeod Wilkinson, Bimoy Chen, Maya Khan, Satish Ramsaran, Shana, Sharina Ramkisun and family, Sharon Wilson, Franco Pestana, Ita Chandler, Anne-Marie Dulal, Dave Lux, Neil Mohammed, Akil Camps, and from our international arms, Delworth Braffitt, Ali G, Anil Mirage, and all our support staff. The talent within this group is simply phenomenal. The time, energy, personal sacrifices and resources that you continue to put into this endeavor is a victory in itself. And yesterday would not have been possible if it weren't for each and every one of you. With all my heart, I thank you. To all our supporters, both members and non-members, those who have taken the time to commemorate our one-year anniversary. You have undoubtedly made it all worthwhile. It is because of you that we continue to fight so hard and have been able to move from strength to strength. We continue to face our detractors head-on because of your encouragement and willingness to stand with us. It is my belief that we are pushed to a higher standard than any other political party because of your faith and trust in us. And we will do our best to not disappoint you, as so many have done before. At this time, I'd like to take a moment on behalf of the executive of the Progressive Empowerment Party, and I'm sure our entire viewership, to thank in all humility the man responsible for bringing us all together. One of the most fearless, tireless, extraordinary human beings I have ever met. A man as kind and passionate as he is controversial and stubborn. A man whose vision for this country has moved us all to take action and demand better for ourselves, instead of continuing to accept what is. And who has instilled in all of us what it means to be a true pepper, one people under one flag. A man whose integrity is unwavering and unfailing against all odds. None other than our interim political leader, Mr. Philip Edward Alexander. This year, our mission is to level up, and we invite each of you to join with us. Thank you all so very much. Debbie Lee. Yes, sir. Thank you for your very kind description of me, and I love you more for it. And I want to say on behalf of the entire party, thank you for everything that you did to make that event happen. You impressed us all. And thank you very much for this very detailed vote of thanks. No problem. Could I, ask you, could I ask you, does this exist um, as a complete typed up list? Yes. Could I? Could you send it to me so I could share it on my wall? No problem. Thank you very much, Debbie Lee. You're welcome. Debbie Lee Jaikaran, she is head of the events planning team. And while she was reading that list, every name she called, Jenny and Kevin Gayadin. I saw Kevin Gayadin yesterday in short pants and, and, and short sleeve t-shirts for the first time. Of course, I've seen this man well-dressed, a businessman. And he is there 
pulling cable, running holes, and, and I didn't know who he was until he spoke to me. And, and Jenny, I mean, Jenny was a force of nature. Jenny, Jenny guy, I didn't get, I don't know what to tell you. I kill camps. I kill boy. I feel if Pep needed a kidney, Akil would give them a kidney. Akil camps. Last night, trying to tell Akil thanks, and Akil don't want to hear no thanks. Dave Locks. Dave Locks, your tono. Dave Locks. If, if the Pep had an organ, Dave is the heart. That boy don't stop. That boy don't stop. We as a party. And look at these people, and I'm wondering how is this? happening I don't know all these people all these perfect personalities Janice and Tony you couldn't design a better master of ceremonies than those two I mean we are a small unfunded party everything we did was volunteers everything was handed on or, or some so it, it was all literally make as if and the two of them, Janice and Tony, hiccup after hiccup, and they just deal with it normal, normal. And most of the people had no clue if we had a mistake or not. The sound company, I mean, that boy just showed up and he said, listen, I am a pepper. We handle the sound. And that was it. They handled the sound. There were so many people. Michelle Sohan called me and said, what I could do? I say, anything you want to do. She sent boxes of pastries, mixed up tea plates. And if you see how many, and it was, it shared at the end. People, I mean, we had so much food. People walking by the event, stop and get food. It was amazing. It was amazing. It was amazing. It was an amazing event. The people who worked in this event, Carleen Sideno, you wouldn't hear her name often. She's the... She sat down there and made sure, Carlin, we will disagree one out of two times, but I know all she is concerned about is that the Progressive Empowerment Party is held to the highest standard. So when Carlin speaks, even if I disagree, I listen. Suzanne and Kendall. Suzanne and Kendall worked like a full-on advertising agency. You see the graphics that we had. You also, I mean... Outdoor advertising team needs stuff, banner people need stuff, graphics people need stuff, things happening, we need a this, we need a that. And these two just grinding stuff out 24-7 and they have their lives, they have their jobs, and they just made it look so effortless. And I know it can't be. I know that is real, real sacrifice. And, and when I look at all of these people, in this party, Ali G end up in the ER and nobody knew because she just promoted that. She just promoted this rally, organizing the overseas chapters, keeping the lid on everything. And she in the ER and nobody knew in New York. And Ali, Helen Montandan, she is part of the advisory council. Helen, mother, her sisters, everybody come and they come to say, if Helen in this party, we in this party. And it's just so, and the whole thing yesterday. I mean, I vexed that I had to wake up this morning and, 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 and engage some of these mouth breeders. I mean, these knuckle draggers, PNM and UNC sycophants. Somebody asked today on Facebook, if you're defending something, defend something right now. Forget Pep. Philip Alexander could be the biggest ass in the world. Forget us. But if you're defending something, oh Christ. Have the love of country, have the love of self, have the love of family to go to the people you're defending and say, listen, we're defending you to the end. A bleeding yellow or a bleeding balise. But, but just explain to me where the money really going now. If we spend $50 billion on healthcare in the last 10 years, tell me now, when my mother falls sick, she can get the same treatment your mother get in? She can fly out? Or oh, I had to go on Take a number and take jam in, in General Hospital. Tell me, tell me somebody asked, Christian Mackelson, he asked, how come neither party 
going into the parliament and giving you back the power of the parliament. How come neither of them give you recall? Recall is literally a copy and a paste. It exists in the commonwealth. We copy and paste. We had 20 attorneys general. Not one of them could have thought about the people. Not one prime minister could have said, you know what? The power of recall would make the parliament work better. So it wouldn't be a bunch of stunting artists. Listen. We have to get to the point where the captain of the ship is given responsibility for the ship. And if the ship all over the place, and you're missing your destination, you're bouncing up on rocks, people puking. You had a one ask the captain, bro, you know what you're doing? You have a clue, you have a plan, you have a goal, you have a destination, you have a map. What have they done with their terms in office? The UNC is trying to the heart is this morning UNC wake up sick they wake up sick and I could see them I was part of their communications machinery I know how it works this morning everybody sent into their little teams watch me and sending talking points have these little crews making memes and, and, and just attack them attack it destroy that man boy because you know what UNC woke up this morning sick once the Progressive Empowerment Party exists, UNC could never win an election, ever. Worse, they are seeing that they're losing members in droves, they're losing support. They're seeing that they post on Facebook that Kamala's live videos, nobody taking them on. They're seeing it, you can't miss those numbers. You can't. The UNC woke up this morning sick because the UNC cannot do what we did yesterday. The UNC, the United National Congress, cannot call a rally and see who turn up. Just see. The United National Congress and the PNM has to pay people. I was in St. James in 2011 when Keith Rowley called a PNM meeting in PNM Heartland in St. James, the closed bonds road opposite Charlie's. They Close it, and if you see the size of the tent they put on there, and they had about 50 chairs and 10 had bottoms on them. PNM couldn't move a crowd in St. James. UNC know that they can't pull a crowd now. And if you have to do it, Rowley had to go and cut a deal with Roger. Rowley had to go and sell his soul to Abdullah. I know what Abdullah get, I know Rocky Garcia get, I know Enchan Ishmael get it. These fellas get it, pay off. Wherever it is, they get it. To keep this crazy train in the office. But it's a crazy train. How is this country not on the road tonight? Burning candle for vigil. And firing this madman. He has raped the Aripo Savannah that has been protected for almost a century. The entire world United Nations Heritage Fund pays for it. This madman told Calco, cut it down. I, I'm telling you, it is astonishing that we continue to labor on like that was nothing. That was like, oh. It's, I don't know. I don't know what to compare it to. It's like they throw down the cathedral to put up a mall. I don't know what to compare it to. I don't know how to explain to you the size of the madness that it took. And what is worse, the EMA is being led by some PNM sycophantic soldiers because the EMA job was to guard that forest. As the EMA work, the guards kill the person they guarding. The gods tell you, cut it down. 1937 declared a world heritage site. The sign up by the Aripo Forest, all like Kid Rowley. Oh God, man. Oh God. What kind of demons we have in government? What kind of demons we have? You trying to tell me they don't have one member of cabinet with enough decency to resign from government over that. We don't have five parliamentarians to resign from parliament and force a by-election to make a point. We don't have that. So it's only demons.
Nobody care. Any kind of messages I get in. Nobody taking the shit on. Soka sell out last night. People stumbling through tongue drunk. I'll give you this one. These are the messages that fill up my phone. Shooting in Quarry Street, Diego Martin. One person shot. A police sergeant's son just got shot. Hearing a pregnant woman was also shot. Hearing one named Cassava dead in the shooting. Two in the hospital, gunshot wounds. Oh Christ, man. You have a jackass as a prime minister. The man is dumb as a post. As a fence post. A fence post. The reason they say a fence post is dumb is to have one walk. Stand up straight. Keith Rowley can't do that. The man dumb as a fence post. He is an absolute jackass. Dr. John Prince in the Telecommunications Authority studying if we sh if jackass is a bad word, he should be studying how we end up with a jackass as Prime Minister. This is our absolute truth. And you have a next stunting, drunken jackass dressed in yellow. Look now, I remember when Gregory White tell me they show up, I used to show up in the house and out one cigarette to light another. These people not normal, you know. They're not normal, they're dysfunctional, high-functioning sociopaths. These are not the compassionate people that the, the tweakers, the spin doctors, they spend big money, you know. I remember the scarf, I remember when, when they, they actually draped a scarf around Rowley to humanize him. They actually draped a scarf around him to humanize him, to make him look decent. The PNM spent hours going through photos trying to find one of that jackass smiling. They couldn't find anything for his bio to say that this was his accomplishment. Fitzgerald Hines went on the television to tell the nation that when I called that man a jackass, it was flying in the face of his 32 years of service. But I want to know, and everybody wants to know, what did he do with it? The people of Karanaj, who has fed his two girl children and raised his two girl children, put food in his wife Sharon and two girl children belly for decades, stand up there waiting for their fish market so they could put food in their own children belly. And this nasty, stinking, disgusting jackass stunting on TV, trying to pretend he is Obama, when the people who put him there, who make sure that he and his family could eat, suffer it. Now you tell me, you tell me today, tell me now, Philip, fire yourself, we like it so, we want that. We do not want leadership that serve and servants who lead. We do not want good governance. We do not want the parliament to function as a representation of people. We do not want the government to be a function of parliament that delivers to that service comm commitment. We do not want that. We want jamming. We want pain. We want suffering. We want to go in the hospital and take jamming. We want to go in the police service and police station and can't tell police from thief. We want that. We want cases to drag on for 17, 20, and 30 years in the courts. That's what we want, Philip. We want them to run this country like it's a private piggy bank. We want URP and CPEP to have mattress on the floor for the foreman to be interfering with all the girls who are looking for 10 days. We want that. Philip, we want that. We want open borders and 30,000 illegal guns and 570 women missing. Shizel Ramjit yesterday in that public rally. Read out names. And each name, she read it like a staccato slap. Bap, 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 bap. She calling names of people just dead or missing. And we live in, in this country, like this normal. This is not what you're supposed to want. The security of the people is the function of government. Christ, let that sink into your head. It's like you go to a restaurant and you order food. The chef's job is to put the food on the plate. Your safety and security in this country is a function of government. The well-being of the citizenry, food in poor people's belly is a 
function of government, the ability to own home, to share the resources of the nation equitably, to account to the people transparently. That is the purpose, reason, rationale of government. If we cannot understand that, if we cannot get, listen, eh? listen, and I'm saying this, truth, truth, talk, truth talk, I will not be tolerating a single faith profile on my wall anymore. Right now, a fellow named D, what? Lloyd D. Stiff is being blocked. Lloyd D. Stiff. Your name is Lloyd D. Stiff, and you're coming to defame and scandalize me on my wall, and I'm not tolerating it anymore. And anybody who come on my wall as a fake profile, you get blocked. Come with your Christian name or your Bible, whatever on your birth certificate, come with that. Or don't come at all. Don't come at all. I don't mind disagreement. Disagree with me. I bright like this not by only reading confirmation bias. I bright like this by having debates and arguments. I understand what it is to be challenged. You can ask. The Progressive Empowerment Party. We don't sit down in meetings and talk like Mark with the Queensberry rules. We discuss. We discuss and we argue and we fight till we get the right version of what we want to be. This ain't no stuntman show. This ain't no ego fest. This is not for people to come and find this. I tell people already, you know, you come into this party, we get into government, you get yourself in trouble, you get yourself out of it, you know. All pots stand up on their own butter. And I say this again, I've said it before. If we stand for integrity, transparency, and morality in public affairs, we will doubly stand for it from PEP members. Eh? Don't come with that by we. Understand that. Come back to this. Come back to this. Ignore the trolls. Ignore the distractions. Ignore it. Focus on this. Focus. Bring your attention to hear that the purpose of government is the well-being of the people. The conversation starts and stops right there. Right there it starts and stops. You don't need to say another word. What they say in perfection. What they say in writing circles. When you know you write something well. When you've written something well. Perfectly. The greatest. The greatest compliment that a writer could get is not one word wasted not one word wasted you see that statement the well-being of the citizenry is the purpose of government not one word wasted if Keith Rowley does not understand that that is his job description we need to fire him and if there are no means right now in the Constitution to fire his ass, then we need to shut the country down. We need to stop doing what we do. We need to stop working and stop consuming and say, hey, that's it. No more murder, no more suffering, no more hunger, no more failed education, no more collapse in healthcare, no more rape in the Aripo Savannah, no more jobs for the boys, no more madness with the Tobago ferry, no more collapse in Tobago economy so your partners in sandals and scandals could make money, no more 1% feasting while the rest of the people starving, no more, no more, no more. If the banks cannot give everybody foreign exchange, the banks can't give Nobody for an exchange. And if Starbucks and Little Caesars get in money to pay the overseas franchise, the Minister of Finance and the Central Bank Governor has to account to the man and the woman on the street who can't get 100 US in the bank. Because that's the two of them work. And if the Central Bank Governor doesn't understand that, fire his stunting ass. And if the Minister of Finance doesn't understand that, fire him. That is your role. You are the citizen. You are the boss. You own this country. And if you get that at all, you don't need me. If you get that, if you get it in your soul, if you understand that when I went on that television show to face down Fazir, I went there as a citizen of the Republic of Trinidad Tobago, and I know my rights, and you will not roll over them, and I will not, you listen, you could kill me. But I'm not taking it easy. I will not go gently into that good night. You will have your hands full. I will stand on my rights as a citizen of the great republic of Trinidad and Tobago. And if you're coming, come good. 
The truth of the matter is the people of this country have allowed themselves to be bamboozled and fooled by two rip raping political parties. The PNM and the UNC have nothing for you. If they had for you, if they had anything for you, in the two booms that go on, you gonna get it. We on dry coconut season now. My partner used to tell me it's not green guava season anymore. No. It's dry coconut season. That way we reach. That way we reach. You need a government in office that, hey, we have to measure three times and cut once. We can't build no jackass highway mans and all that nobody need. We cannot build that. Now is not the time for that. We could build it in the future when things good, when everybody happy, everybody belly full, no rain and wet to nobody. We deal with the homeless. We deal with the drug problem. We deal with the guns and the violence. Thing fixed and we bubbling. Let me see if we can build a highway here, there, and every friggin' way. But now is not the time. You went and built a water park in Shagaramas with a road that can't take cars now. So you want to come back and say the water park need a highway. So spend the billion dollars. But a progressive empowerment party government will shut that water park down. Reclaim that land and wipe them out. The truth of the matter is government financiers and friends and contractors and partners have been raping this country. And you and me and we who own this not doing what we're supposed to do. And our job is to stand in defense of the future generations to come who are going to be born into a nation that owns nothing. Slaves that are 1% who have used well-placed political operatives to rape the country and give it to them. That cannot continue. We cannot allow this to be our future. We cannot. While we, while we in Soka, while we in Soka partying, hear this, the guy joking, you know what this government capable of? While we in Soka partying, this going on in the freaking parliament, unless you want to enter into the realm of breaking and entering, it is not every citizen who could just walk into the SSA with a torchlight and go looking for information. The clari this clarification was given by PNM Senator Clarence Rambarat during his contribution. This is the Minister of Freaking Agriculture. Why is Clarence Rambarat, former journalist, attorney, why is he being the one sent forward to cut people's throat with this bill? Is it because Clarence is a token Indian in a black man party and they play in optics in government? This clarification was given by PNM Senator Clarence Rambarat during his contribution to an opposition motion to dis disnull the government's Freedom of Information Exemption Order 2017 in the Senate last Tuesday. The order seeks to remove the SSA from under the Freedom of Information Act, thereby disallowing citizens access to any kind of information from the state intelligence agency. Well, they just, hear what they just do. They didn't, they, they're not just going to rape you. Know? They're going to legalize rape. That is what this government is going to do. That is their plan. Their plan is not just to rape you, but to make it that if you go to the police station and say that they rape you, they say, hey, but I'm not going to see law anymore. That the SSA could stalk you, tap you, monitor you, take that information from you, use it against you, and you can't find out. I want to know. I want to get a Freedom of Information Act to, to go and ask what was the SSA doing prior to email it. Because was the SSA involved in any way in that information that Keith Rowley got? Somebody said so to me. Somebody said that that was an actual SSA sweep of the government given to the opposition. And if that is in any way true, all of that is treason. And you understand what you're dealing with? They want to put a cloak on that. You could never, ever, ever ask that question. In this dot, in this speck on a, I mean, we are literally sand on a beach when you look at the globe. Trinidad is a micro dot. We don't, we don't qualify as a county or a borough. We're a dot. The regional health authority system that we copied in England, we, our entire country of Trinidad and Tobago, doesn't qualify as one. RAJ. We don't have enough land size. You understand what we're talking about? This little tiny dot in the ocean is being turned into a dictatorship, 
a thief down, a kleptocracy, a feast for a 1% that wants to remove all human rights, all rights to privacy, all rights to, to, to free association, all rights to free speech. They want to remove all of that. They effectively want to reduce you to a drone. In countries like Iraq, this is what Faris wants. In countries like Iraq and, and now Venezuela, you can't contest elections. Opposition members get jailed. People who oppose the government get killed. And they will make it illegal for you to oppose the government. They want to do that. This is a mad ass crazy train we have running this country. And we, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, if we don't wake up soon and stand up for this country, we're going to end up in trouble. We in trouble now, but we will end up in worse trouble. You have a responsibility to talk. You have a responsibility to stand up. Listen, they say, but for a few people, it is all that stands between us and the darkness. You know? If it wasn't for Gary Abour and Fisherman and Friends of the Sea, you think the media telling you the government raping a repo Savannah? Check yourself, the man, they wrecking the nation. Get involved. Wake up. When you're voting, vote them out. Vote them out. If it is the proven, to be only full of out. When you're voting, vote them out. Vote them out. If it is the time is now, that change should come about. Just as how you vote them in, vote them out. in a democracy to, is to stand in defense of that democracy. That is the first role of a citizen in a democracy. A citizen in a democracy has the right to question its government. A citizen in a democracy has a right to demand accountability at every level. We are appointing another president. We have a president-elect. The last president fooled us with powers he have and things he has. He never had no powers at all. We know now that it is all a rules and destruction. It is nonsense. We need to undo it and redo it. Fifty-five years. As soon as they win, and enslave your soul from the senior roles. he mean? Let us put our country together again. Imagine you live in a country where the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service has an internal affairs unit that has one job, to lock up corrupt and criminal police. All of a sudden, corrupt and criminality in the police service goes away. It goes away. 
Imagine if you lived in a country where that same now clean and clear police service is incentivized and motivated to do a job. Imagine if they are operating on the streets within the community and you see and interact with them 24 hours a day on a daily basis. Imagine if a police officer is always two to five minutes away from any emergency call. Imagine if a police officer turns on his siren in traffic. There is an organization somewhere where that siren going off starts to highlight him as a blip on a screen so that his commander could ask him, at what point were you on an emergency run? Because if you weren't, you just lost car privileges back walking on the street. These are the kind of policies that the Progressive Empowerment Party, simple, counterintuitive, normal, common sense, rational policy that design to fix this country. Imagine if once you have a job, you could qualify for a loan. Imagine that. Imagine if once you have a job, you could qualify for a loan and it's government responsibility to make sure that every citizen of this country have access to a home. Imagine if the government's responsibility, like Norway, Sweden, Switzerland. Imagine if the government, Holland, the government took responsibility to ensure that every citizen have a job. That once you want a job, there will be a job for you. Not a CPEP, URP, stunting hustle for proper job. So you can advance yourself and pay your taxes so that the country could be properly run. Imagine if you were living in a country where you went to, you needed to go to the hospital, there is a healthcare center in your constituency that you have to go to first. And they will stabilize any emergency you have and forward you on if you need to. Capable of minor surgery, accident and emergency, triage, 24-7. Just imagine that. Imagine if every school, every constituency had schools, zoned, 10-year schools, prestige schools, no SEA. Imagine if everybody in the country could go to St. Joseph, St. Mary's, Fatima, Holy Name and Presentation. Imagine that. Well, we could do that. These are not magic things. It's not rocket science to make all schools functional. This is not rocket science. It is not rocket science to take all the farmland and pair it with farmers and give them instructions as to what to grow. It's not rocket science for you to set up a central market in all 41 constituencies so that the average person could go and buy their fruits and vegetables wholesale at a very affordable price. From the tree to you. Imagine that country Imagine that country where the borders are secure, where you can't drive a pirog of cocaine up any river or a Bertram full of cocaine up into any yacht club. Imagine that country where we secure the nation's borders. A simple thing like soda boys we don't have. We don't know what is going on. This is a country that ships, shiploads, tankers of liquefied natural gas. We don't protect those boats. If somebody was, if there was to, a terrorist was to attack one of those ships, it could level Port of Spain. We, do you try to tell me the Minister of National Security don't know that? The head of the Coast Guard don't know that? The Prime Minister don't know that? Fire all three. We're supposed to protect those ships. We're supposed to protect our borders, our maritime borders. We're supposed to make it impossible for you to ship cocaine from Tobago to Trinidad. Or guns from Trinidad to Tobago. They don't check nothing. You have truck full of goods going to Tobago, and what they tell you on the bill, you accept that. It could be a truckload of rifles and coke. You don't know. Nobody checking nothing. Madness. Total and complete madness. We want to live in a country where the cost of living in Tobago is the same as the cost of living in Trinidad. And government's job is that. That is government's responsibility. Again, the people of Tobago, they're not asking for things they're not, they're not titled to. Imagine you living in Tobago as a Trinidadian. You're, paying, you're being paid the same salary as a Trinidadian, but the cost of living in Tobago is 18 to 21 percent higher. Why would that be acceptable to anybody? And if you were Tobagoian, wouldn't that piss you off? 
We, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, have to want better for all of the people of this country. We must want everybody to have hope and opportunity. We must want every citizen to be able to maximize their potential. We must want the same good service for ourselves in the license office and the passport office and the birth certificate office as we want for everybody else. We must want people to have access to first world education and healthcare, proper policing, a proper government, a proper parliament. We have 30 cabinet ministries or more. We don't need, we, we don't need more than nine. We don't need the Senate. We don't need local government. We don't need the RHAs. We don't need those special purpose companies. All of this is bullshit. All of this is theft. All of it. We have a national insurance board that deducting salaries by law, deducting from poor people's salaries that don't have controls over what they could do with that same money they just took from poor people's salary. So you could take it and sponsor a discotheque around the Savannah. Now imagine a country where the person who made that decision is doing two to five for misbehavior in public office. Imagine that country. We, the Progressive Empowerment Party, are here for one reason. We are here to disrupt that politics as usual. We are here to give the people information, education, and empowerment so that they understand the purpose of parliament and the purpose of government. We are also here to give you a choice. Yesterday, this misinformation that the PEP is a one-man party was demolished. Our next meeting, you will meet more people who have significant roles in this party. You heard Debbie Jaikara. You heard her list. That's the Progressive Empowerment Party. That's the teams and the executives that make up this party. You go and check and see if PNM and UNC have that kind of depth now. Go and check. Go and check. The truth of the matter is Right now, one year old, the Progressive Empowerment Party is quite possibly the most diverse, best set up and organized political organization in this country and has the best policies, programs and ideas to undo and redo this nation to the benefit and satisfaction of all its citizens. We will remake into law and cast and carve it into the constitution that the well-being of the citizenry is the purpose of government. We will ensure a citizen's bill of rights as an amendment to the constitution. So you will never encounter another jackass like Faris Arawi as your attorney general to come and tell you that the freedom of speech is not absolute. We will make it so. We will make it that it is completely absolute. We will remove all of these fetters that they've put on people's freedoms. We will remove them, tear up the paper they're written on, wipe them out and write into the constitution that no government to come must ever interfere with the rights of the citizens of the Republic of China and Tobago. This is what we stand for, a party and a government that will give you recall referendum and campaign finance legislation. We will put beverage container bills into law that will put the responsibility to clean up the drains on the people who benefited from the plastic bottles. All of that, all of that and more. The Progressive Empowerment Party will guarantee you water for all. We will diversify the water distribution system to the 41 constituencies and do joint venture partnerships with 41 different companies and put those people responsible for the distribution of water, the maintenance of the water system, the maintenance of the water quality and the collection of rates in their constituency. We will work that with joint ventures and make WASA only a collection and distributor of bulk water. All of a sudden this thing will start to make sense. All of a sudden you will see how easy it is to break up responsibility for roads, streets, pavements, sidewalks to the constituency level. So all of a sudden you don't have one stunting jackass like Roe Hansen and I'm responsible for the road in your area. Your people will fix it themselves. We want a law where all work done in all constituencies are done by companies in from that constituency by people from the constituency. All of that. All of that and more. All of that and more. When we say we stand for equality, integrity, morality, character, we will show you how you're supposed to get what you're supposed to get. And you will have the ability to go to the people that you support and say, hey, tell us.
Why didn't you do this when you had government? The UNC woke up this morning sick. The PNM going to catch that fever soon. The Progressive Empowerment Party is here for one purpose, to serve the people. We are doing that. Thank all of you who had anything to do with our first anniversary rally yesterday in Lunch Park, Shagwanas. We, we have sworn now that we are going to level up in 2018. And if, every, if anything, if that rally yesterday is an indication of what we're about to be in 2018, Tell the PNM and the UNC and the sycophantic talking heads and trolls to bite down on something hard because this is going to hurt. The Progressive Empowerment Party is not here to ask your permission to contest an election. We demand our rights as citizens and we are going to unite and organize the people in their own best defense. Again, thank all of you who are with us in any way leading up to here. All of you who are still not yet on board, this coming Saturday, we have a meeting at Stanmore Avenue, 19 Stanmore Avenue. Come and be a part of that meeting. Come and ask all your questions. Come and ask all your questions. We will be, we do it right there every Saturday. Our next rally, three months from now, will be in San Fernando. We are planning that starting this Saturday. We will do a follow-up rally in San Fernando, then the East. Tobago, Port of Spain. So be a part of this. Come and get on board. We are on election footing. We are working to undo and redo the entire Republic of Trent Tobago. We will reboot the Republic. With your help, we will make this place the paradise on earth it was meant to be. PepTrendbago at gmail.com. PEPTrendbago at gmail.com. Pep app, that is your app. It's the Pep app. It's available on all the app stores and it's free of charge to download. PepTT.com is the website. 3474 Pep is the hotline. And if you need us, we're at 19 Stanmore Avenue. And we will see you this coming Saturday. Stay safe, children and Tobago.